Hi, this is Carl Weintraub for the Daily Music Break. I'm thrilled to be speaking to Piedmont Blues today, which is Valerie and Ben Turner. And um, in this conversation, first of all, thank you both very much for uh, taking time out. You're welcome. In, in this conversation, we're going to talk a little bit about different genres of uh, of music, acoustic music. The big the big picture, though is if you want to hear some really, really enjoyable, peaceful acoustic music, check out Piedmont Blues. And a lot of people who are uh, like me, raised on rock and roll, are going to recognize at least some of the tunes that they play because they they became the bedrock of, of rock and roll, at least in my mind. I could be wrong about that, but I recognize a lot of the tunes. So, so welcome. Uh, Valerie and Ben, thank you. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you so much. My pleasure. The, the first question I have is really very much an overview. Could you describe what the Piedmont style is? What What is Piedmont music? Well, those are two different questions. Okay. Uh, and depending on who you speak to, you'll get 20 different answers. But the Piedmont music, some people think, is music that comes out of the Piedmont region, which runs along the east coast of the United States from Virginia down through Georgia. Um, but the Piedmont style, which is a technique of finger picking, doesn't necessarily have to be played, of course, by people or artists from that region. Okay. Um, and it's a, a, a style of finger picking where the thumb plays what's called an alternating bass. It goes back and forth between two strings, two bass strings, while the remaining fingers um, pick out a syncopated melody. And that's an important key word there. It's a syncopated melody. Uh, if I could interrupt, sorry to interrupt. I try, try not to be rude, but sometimes. Uh, um, I just jump in. What, what do you mean by syncopated, Valerie? Well, it doesn't sound like a marching band. It's not on, it, 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 it's music that's played where the rhythms are syncopated. They're in between the beats. Okay. It could be ahead of the beat or behind the beat, uh, but it's not on the beat all the time, like as a rule. It, it doesn't sound like this. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And the only thing I would change, and that's, that's just my personal definition, and the only thing I would change is to say that there are exceptions to, to that. Uh, the biggest exception being someone like Elizabeth Cotton, who played in that style with an alternating okay. bass, but she didn't play that bass with her thumb because she had her guitar flipped around. It was upside down. So she was actually playing her bass strings with her fingers and playing a lot of that melody with the thumb. Um, I was going to bring up Elizabeth Cotton, who, of course, was uh, of freight train fame and mm -hmm. a lot more. The, um, in looking at when, when I, I did a post and listened to a lot of Elizabeth Cotton, and in the um, description of her, she was called a, a, a ragtime guitarist, or maybe that's just inaccurate, or maybe I got it wrong. I always, of course, thought of ragtime piano. I didn't even know there was a ragtime guitar, but there is. It, I guess the A, it, is there, was I correct in that some people called her that, or is it just in my, in my mind? And, it, and more importantly, probably, is there overlap between different genres of acoustic guitar playing from, from way back in the day? Well, I'd like to answer that by saying that ragtime music is a genre of music yeah. right. which preceded blues music, acoustic blues music. Okay. Um, so ragtime is a genre but the Piedmont style of finger picking is a technique. And so that technique could be applied to many different genres of music. 
I could use that Piedmont style of finger picking and play folk music. I could use it for rock and roll. I could use it for, and, and it certainly is very uh, linked to ragtime playing. Ragtime <laughs> is certainly very syncopated and it often does feature uh, an alternating bass, not always, but mm -hmm. we'll hear that. So there's a lot of overlap in that regard. So, so what I hear you saying is that it's not apple, it's, it's to some extent apples and oranges, that, that uh, Piedmont is a technique and ragtime is, is a genre. And it, it, because of Scott Joplin, it became more associated with piano, but there are ragtime um, guitar players, is that? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. You know, it's funny that you say that because when I was looking at the list of um, Piedmont style guitarists, it seemed very, very broad. I mean, I don't, I don't hear a lot of similarity between Reverend Gary Davis and Mississippi John Hurt. I mean, other than they're both great, but it seems like a lot a lot different. Um, is, 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 it seems like it's a very broad category. So as you were saying, I guess, that a lot of people can use it for a lot of different things, a lot of different shows. Who, who are some of the other people? I just mentioned Gary Davis, who's mentioned as a Piedmont style. Who are some of the other big, big names? There's a lot of really fun, unknown names when you, when you look on the list. I think two, Baker. Well, we, we, we did mention, Ben just mentioned Etta Baker. Etta Baker, Etta Baker. is another yes. excellent yeah. example. We already mentioned Elizabeth Cotton and Mississippi right. John Hurt. Right. Uh, you have people like John Jackson. Mm -hmm. He was out of um, the Virginia area. And similar to John Jackson, you've got John Cephas, who was uh, our good friend and, and my mentor. Um, he was from Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. You have people like um, Fred McDowell and Fulton Allen. Um, mm -hmm. th there's just, the, the list just goes on and on. Um, I'm, I'm going to say that um, Memphis Minnie or Lizzie Douglas mm -hmm. was her actual name. She mm -hmm. played often in that style. Um, it, the, the list is very, is, very endless. Is, is Bucko White in that category? Is he? He could be, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I would say yes, but of course, there are always, always going to be people that disagree. And it, it makes a lot more sense to me now just because y your description of it more as a, uh, a tool, for lack of a better word, as opposed to a specific genre. So that, 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 makes, that makes a lot more sense. Um, before we started recording, I, I was um, telling you that I'm a huge, huge fan of Mississippi John Hurt. To me, what resonates is that it's just as peaceful, precise, and his personality seems peaceful and calm and just a, you know, just a relaxing kind of music to listen to. That's, that's what resonates with me. Why, why are you guys, you know, fans of uh, Mississippi John Hurt? Oh, his, his music is just so engaging and mesmerizing. It is peaceful, um, for, for sure. Um, I just fell in love with his style of playing and his style of singing from the first time that I heard him. How about you, Ben? Yeah, and most people um, describe him as, as being peaceful. People who have met him and and actually had a moment to speak to him. So yeah. I guess his playing, his personality, you know, that all came That through. all came I, through. It, it's funny with the great ones, the personality is a huge part of it. I did had the opportunity to do a, an interview earlier this week about Doc Watson, and it's the same thing. It's the personality, you know, just, you know, it's very hard, I guess, to be a great, great at anything without your personality being a big part of it. And there's a recording of Mississippi John Hurt actually singing for a coffee company. It's like a coffee commercial. Coffee. You know, it's great. I wanted to have from Maxwell, Maxwell House. House. Yeah. Yeah, right. well, I wanted to run out to Dunkin' Donuts after I, uh, <laughs> I don't think it was an ad for Dunkin' Donuts. 
<laughs> is there a big, now I know there's a link between, and you mentioned rock and roll. I know any, anyone who was raised on rock and roll is familiar with, uh, Miss, with Mississippi John Hurt, with, Mrs., uh, with uh, Fred McDowell, and with Gary Davis. I mean, a lot of the blues music and the rock music of the 60s, Yorba Calcone and people like that, really built on that structure and, and changed it and plugged in amplifiers and, and whatnot. Um, do, you, do you see that line from, from the people we're talking about to rock and roll and beyond? Is that a, is that a, a strong theme to you, you guys who deal with it all the time and play this music you know, for a living? Oh, 100%, yes, because um, blues music was the precursor to jazz and rock and roll, right. and many music forms that have come beyond that. It has really informed much of what we hear in the United States, mm -hmm. and, um, and indeed now worldwide. So there is a definite line, you know, during the folk boom of the 60s, many of the original acoustic blues masters were rediscovered and introduced to a brand new audience um, through festivals and extensive touring that was global. And so the music that they created was able to influence a lot of what happened afterwards. Yeah, and it, it seems like more people uh, in Europe and around the world are more familiar with this music, even more so than some people in the, in the United States. That's what we find when we do, when we perform at various gigs. Um, Europeans are definitely very well informed. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that people in the U.S. aren't, but, but they are, to me, less informed often, our, our audiences, than the ones yeah. in Europe. I think maybe we take it for granted here or something, something like that, but it's probably always been, been the case. Um, and last Piedmont question, I want to talk about Piedmont Blues. Uh, is there a vibrant Piedmont community of performers to this kind of a segue into talking about your the band is there is there a um, uh, is there a vibrant Piedmont style uh, uh, community of musicians today? Um, absolutely, I would say that there's a vibrant acoustic blues community, and within that community, you have many people that play within the Piedmont style and other styles. It, it's not the be all and end all. Right. There are people playing in lots of different styles and it right. is vibrant. Um, and I'm really happy that there are so many younger people yes. picking up the baton and right. really diving in headfirst and um, carrying these early traditions on. Yeah, people like John Tavius Willis, there's Samuel James, Sean McDonald, um, Hubby and Hubby Jenkins. Jenkins. There's just so, so many. And That's great. It's, it's so refreshing to, and, to see. And I see, I want to ask you directly about the, uh, about Piedmont Blues, but I see on your website that you guys do um, uh, classes and, you know, so you're, you're no doubt contributing to uh, the fact that it's living on. Yes, we both yeah. do workshops. One workshops. Of the that, that we mm -hmm. contributed was we we wanted to the, back in the '60s and '70s and '80s, a lot of people documented these early masters either in in books or in film right. or recordings, and these artifacts have helped future generations. And we wanted to contribute to that effort. We we ourselves published a book. Here it is. It's called Piedmont Style Country Blues is Guitar it, Basics. That's, that's beautiful. It's a beautiful cover. Who is that on the cover? That's Valerie. That's me. Oh, that's you. That's me. 
Oh, okay. It's, it's this, Zoom, this, this Zoom thing's not working for me. No, I have many different looks. Your hair, your hair was down, that's my excuse. It, it was. And um, it was shorter. And it was much time. shorter here. Yeah. But, um, and ben, ben designed the book. It's a beautiful book. Um, it's been acquired by the Library of Congress. Oh, beautiful. Congratulations. Yeah. Is, is it on Amazon? Hmm? Is it on Amazon? No, you have to get it from us. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Um, so tell me about Piedmont Blues. You, my understanding is that you both had non-musical careers, and now you have stopped that and you're doing Piedmont Blues. Can you tell me how, how long Piedmont Blues has been a band and um, how it started and how you made that decision? Yes, well, Valerie was a software engineer and I was a senior art director, graphic designer. And, um, you know, as, as time went by, we decided that, you know, we wanted to get out of corporate America and, and do something other than that. And, and um, you know, we, we spoke about it and- Yeah, you only live once. Yeah. And we were kind of tired of the environment that we were working in for different reasons. And Ben said, well, let's just leave. And, <laughs> and so we did. We, we, we didn't have a plan to play music for people. That, that was never part of the reason for leaving that kind of emerged after the fact, like once you make room for something else to happen, then it happens. And, right. um, and what it was, was actually, that? It was actually John Cephas who sort of made this happen in a yeah, way. Yeah, before he passed away, he really encouraged um, a lot of his students to, to teach the things that he had taught them to perform um, just to help move everything on to another generation. And so I had promised him at some point that, that I, I would do that. So it was a kind of a natural progression. So I, I guess everything is sort of on hold because of the, uh, the pandemic, but do, do you, when, when things are normal and we have things like concerts, um, do you, do you play a, a lot around here in the, in the New York metropolitan area? Do you do you travel abroad a lot? Do you go where? Do, do you have a geographic focus, or you just go to festivals? How how do you approach it? Well, it's uh, mostly on the East Coast. It's an East Coast tradition. So, um, and we've actually expanded out to the places in the Midwest, like Wisconsin and. Where else have we been recently? We, we've been to Michigan. Yes. We've been um, Indiana. We've been on, on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. We 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 don't like target a specific area. We kind of check our email and <laughs> see. Well, I, I should say that at, in the beginning we used to reach out to venues and festivals and say, "Hey, would you consider having us?" And we didn't really get great. Um, responses. Sometimes they don't respond at all. And so we just stopped reaching out. And these days we just wait and see, well, who contacts us? The funny thing is we, as soon as we stopped reaching out, people started reaching <laughs> they started in finding us. and finding us on whether it was Facebook or just emailing us. And it was interesting. <laughs> it's been very interesting. Maybe I should stop trying to get advertising for the website. So maybe <laughs> that'll work for me. Yeah. But we've, okay. also, we've also traveled internationally um, mm -hmm. to Ireland, uh, Spain, where else? We've been we to been Israel. To? Mm -hmm. um, we've been to Belgium, Austria. Yes. You've, you've been all around this world, huh? Mm, not, <laughs> A few not, places. Not quite. But yeah. Samuel, been, sounds like you've... It says I have a good start on, on doing that. <clears throat> so I have one more question for each of you, and I'll start with you, Valerie. Wikipedia says that you play a 1929 Art I Soul parlor guitar with a hyphen between the art and the I and the I and the soul. Um, with a name like that, there ought to be a good story 
connected to the instrument. If there isn't, you should make one. Make up. one up. Make one I, up. I, I think it's called Artiso. Artiso. Okay, so I guess. I, I think, but it's a type of Stella guitar. And as you pointed out, it's from the, um, the 1920s. I purchased it from Neil Harp. He's in um, Maryland. And he, I don't think he does it anymore, but he used to seek out old Stella guitars and um, have them refurbished. And then he'd make them ready for sale. And that's how I picked that instrument up. And as unusual as it is, and as much as I love it, yeah. it's not my favorite guitar. It's uh, my favorite instrument to play. And the one that I've been pretty much exclusively playing is made by Ron Phillips. He's in California. And it's a, a small resonator. Um, I love that instrument because it's nice and loud, whether I have great amplification from a venue or not, I can still be heard. And as far as I know, Ron Phillips is the only person that makes high quality resonators in the small size that I require. Mm -hmm. that, that's been my, my favorite instrument. Okay, well, that's, that's actually way above my head. I would ask a really clever follow-up, but it's, it's over my head, so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna move on. But it sounds, it sounds to me like musicians <clears throat> just have a, um, you know, it's a whole world. The instruments are a, a whole world that us lay people don't know about. The, there's a great clip I can send it to you. Are, are you familiar with Blind Boy Paxson? Yes. Yeah, we know him very well. Yeah, he are you, you also lives here. He also yeah. lives here in Queens. Does he really? He's, he's a, he has a, you've probably seen the video of him playing an old, beautiful, sad, sad song written uh, by a slave. And it, he played, the song was written, I think in 1856 or something. Uh, but he's playing on a banjo that was made the same year. And he's, he's, he's amazing. I'll send you the clip. I mean, it's almost, it's heartbreaking actually. It's, he is amazing. He's a very talented multi-instrumentalist. Right. And he plays out of a variety of genres. And I, I think he's amazing. Yeah, I've, well, that that much I know about. I know amazing when I see it, and he's he, he is amazing. So now, Ben, um, the workshops and what you play, what I see on the videos, washboard, bones, and spoons. My observation, first of all, has long been that it's interesting how um, household items were instruments. And I, I don't know if a bone is a household item, but you know, kind of, kind of is. And so, if you could, if you could comment on that, how things like the washboard. I love washboard Sam, as a matter of fact. He's yes, he's great. Uh, well, picking the picking the potatoes is one of my favorites. <laughs> um, you know, if you could, if you could just um, react to that, I guess, of these in, these household items becoming instruments in music and the, the really the relevance of that to how music evolved and and the other part of the question for is is there actually a way to play these things as there is a way to play a guitar or is it more just a feeling of rhythm and, and hitting whatever it is correctly i don't i don't know if that even makes sense well, back in, in, in those days, people didn't have much money to purchase expensive instruments. So uh, pots and pans, whatever they can find around the home became percussion instruments, uh, such as the bones, the washboard, uh, even the wash tub was made into a bass instrument. Uh, pots and pans, spoons, and... Um, you know, from listening to different recordings, I did hear, you know, a, a basic way that uh, the washboard was played. Now, some of my washboard heroes, uh, uh, you know, uh, a man by the name of Newman Taylor Baker from the Ebony Hillbillies, 
and um, you know there there are different styles and i I created uh, my own style from listening to other people uh, there's washboard Chaz of Louisiana I think you're familiar with him and um, you know so I just listened to them I even took uh, classes with them at the blues workshops earlier mm -hmm. and um, you know from that I created my own style mm -hmm. and which sounds nothing like either of theirs but mm -hmm. um, you know they definitely had an influence on me and, well it, 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 it said it sounds beautiful I don't, I don't know how percussionists manage to decompartmentalize their bodies and do different things with different parts. I guess, I guess guitarists do it too, but I can't even, you know, I, I'd probably be better trying to do nuclear physics, physics or something, <laughs> but your, your instrumentation fits together uh, beautifully, you know, and that's one of the things you. That, very, uh, you know, that resonated with me. Uh, anyway, I've truly enjoyed meeting both of you. This is this has been just terrific, and I, I really appreciate you guys taking time out. I really do. Um, so this is Carl Weinshank from the Daily Music Break, uh, reminding people that a way that you can support this site is if you are going to Amazon to purchase any Piedmont Blues music or anything else, if you go right from the website, click on one of the links and go to Amazon. The site gets supported with a, a, a slight amount of money from the purchase price. The purchase price remains the same to you. So that's my little uh, advertisement, which I appreciate people sitting through. Um, and again, this is Carl Weinshank with the Daily Music Break, Banking Piedmont Blues, uh, Valerie and Ben Turner. And we'll be back soon with uh, more great music. And remember to keep listening to great music. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you for having much. us. My pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome.